Thank you, Gracie, and thanks to the students so much. They're doing a great job over there. In your package, also, if you don't have this in your package, we have a card. It has uh, four questions on the back of it. We would like for you to fill this out, leave it at the back door, and we'll get back in contact with you. Uh, one thing, the first one is list three things you like about the Youngstown City School. List three things you want to see improve in Youngstown City School. List one most major concern you have about Youngstown City School. Do we have children or grandchildren attending Youngstown City School? Yes, no, if yes, how many? If yes, what school? We need your feedback. If you complete this and leave the back table, we really appreciate that. Now, what I want to do now, last year in March, we sort of came back with, uh, we revised the school district again. Uh, we had the revised two. I want to give you an update where we are right now with that. that that'll be okay. Just give you an update. And uh, the first thing we had to address is that we had too many seats in the school system. Back when you started the building project, you had 10,000 10, students. We only have about 5,400 to 5,300 right now. So we had about 3,000 seats too many. Now, when we get in financial trouble, we come to you and ask you to pass a letter. So the board and myself, we had to be responsible how we spend money. So it didn't make sense to have buildings open that were half full, one third full, one fourth full. So we had to close some buildings. So we had to address that. We also had to look at the school that was an academic emergency. We had UPLC at the time an academic emergency. We closed that. See what happened is that you have so many schools in academic emergency that affect your district rating. So we closed that is a program now. It's over to Wilson. Uh, those are three things that I looked at last year. Uh, let me see here. I go look at this right quick. Another thing we did, we went back and did some research. We noticed that the sixth graders performed better when they were at the elementary school. They performed better. So we put the sixth graders back at the elementary school this year. We closed Kirkmuir. Now, the reason we closed Kirkmuir, Kirkmuir has something like 242 students. If I, I have it here, but 242. Down the street, about a half a mile or three quarter mile, we have McGuffey. McGuffey would be up for 850 students, 750 to 850. They only had about 400 students. So it made sense to put those kids down there and close that bill. We saved a lot of money doing that, so we wanted to come back to you as for pass the levy. So that's another reason we did that. At the same time, we noticed that when we introduced STEM and BPA and Cheney, test scores went up. Now, Here's the thing about it. We did not go to each school and say, I want you to go, y'all want you to go, I want you to go. The students had to apply. They had to demonstrate their skills just like you saw here. Dance, music, art, drama. They had to apply to get in. They had to do an audition to get in. So we didn't pick the students, they picked themselves. The point is, if you find something kids like to do, they do it better. So we saw that in Cheney. So now what we said, okay, let's start to do this for uh, third graders because Cheney is for grade six through eight, six through 12. We had nothing for grade three, four, five. At the same time, we are trying to stop the bleeding and lose the students going to charter schools. Up until last year, this year, we were losing 500, 300, 500, 300 students going to charter school. We had to stop that bleeding in some kind of way. We got to find out something. We got to be better than our competitors. That's the bottom line. Be better than the people you're competing against. Even though the playing field is not left, because they are not judged the same way we judge charter schools. They can pick and choose who they want. We cannot. We are committed to educate all students. We are committed. Because we have students go to charter school, they'll come back. Go to charter school, they'll come back. Because charter school would pick them out, 
We don't kick them out because they don't have anywhere else to go. We take them. We want students. So we we put in a program at Kirkmere. It called, and it's called Discovery. We have a promotional video, which we don't have time to show it tonight. Do we have it on the website yet? Okay. It's a discovery program. So what happened, we have grade three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can pick to go there. Now, one thing about Cheney and STEM, I mean BPA and STEM, we looked at your attendance, your behavior, and your academics. That's change STEM, BPA, okay? Discovery program, we did not look at academics. We looked at your attendance and your behavior. Because that's why it's called, that's why it's called discovery. Discovery. Those students over there, grade three through eight, they will have an opportunity. Now they're gonna take the basic subjects, the core standards, they take that. But at the same time, you have third graders taking Spanish, third graders taking STEM, we have third graders taking investigative science, communication, art, and dance. I would recommend you to go over there and visit that school. It's out of sight. Now, we put that over there, and we had to make sure that, now here's another thing that you need to realize. Even though we have those students over there, we did not pull the smart students, the best students, because they picked the school themselves. So the test score, let's say we have a kid from Harding, a kid from Harding going to Curtin here. Now, Doug is 400, you're on the OAA 400. Okay, we have a kid who scores 400 on the OAA. That's the Ohio Achievement Assessment. That test score goes back to Hardy. So we're not ripping Hardy off because the test scores go back. So they'll make sure we don't have another school. But we just opened up doors for other school. Another thing we did, I'm just giving you an update what we did this year. Another thing we thought about the sixth graders, that would give the parents and the sixth graders to stay in an environment that they kind of like. You know, the transition between six and seven and nine through 10, eight through nine. That's a tough time for students. Now, I have to admit, I, when I first got here, I started the eighth and ninth grade academy. You remember that? At P. Ross Bay. It didn't work, and I'm not ashamed to say it did not work. Because I had to do, I had to try something different. I can paint you a picture of some reason why I think it did not work. First of all, we have to have people who are willing to work with that age group. That is when I said, all teachers going to P. Rossberry will have to apply to go there. All teachers who apply to go there will have to go through a two weeks training on how to understand this age group, be a relationship, I'm a big person, I'm a big believer on three things. Relationship, communication, and trust. You have to have those three things to be successful in anything. So when I did that, I had teachers who did not apply. So when they did not apply, I had to place them somewhere. So they went to P. Ross, it didn't work. I'm, I'm sorry, it did not work. Now, at the same time, the reason I did that, because of that transition period between eighth grade to ninth grade, I thought I'd have those kids in a place where we could sort of build that relationship, get them ready for an OGT. It didn't work out. I'm not afraid to say it. But when you make decisions sometimes, they don't always work. You keep on going. You just don't turn your head and say, oh my God, I made a bad decision. I'm going to probably make some more. Because I have a lot to make. Now, also, let's go back to what else we did this year. We also try what we call CCP. We move the seventh and eighth graders to the high school. We move the seventh and eighth graders. We sort of divided the seventh and eighth graders on the west side of Market Street going to Cheney. 
The seven eight graders on the east side of Market Street going to east. Now, I made a promise to the parents when I was out presenting last year that your kids will be safe there because I was said that the high school kids will not come in contact with the seven eight graders. And we haven't had a problem with that because the seven and eight graders start at 6.45 to 7 o'clock. Eight grade, nine, I mean, 12th graders start at 7.45. So they are there before they get there, they have breakfast, then the high school come in. They have different gyms, they go to the cafeteria at a different time, they dismiss at a different time, so we don't have them running the hallway with the younger kids. So we did, we kept our promise on that. Career tech. Now, we have, uh, we had 11 and 12 graders at East and Cheney who signed up a career tech program at Charlotte. Last year, we had 11 graders going from home to Charlotte. Instead of half a day. The seniors should go from home to East instead of half a day. Then we flip flop it. We flip flop it. The juniors go back to East in the afternoon, and the seniors will go to Charlotte in the PM. Then I found out I had some juniors. Instead of them getting on the bus going to East, they were going downtown, walking around downtown. I can't stop that. Let me fix that. So what we did this year, we did not assign any kid to Charlotte. We let them make that decision. Now, if you was in a program, it's a two-year program, is that correct, Joe? It's a two-year program at Charlotte. So if I had juniors who started the junior year at Charlotte, they weren't making a decision to go into college prep or career prep. The seniors chose to go to Charlotte. I don't think we have any seniors at East. We don't have any seniors at East. People, I didn't take them out. They made that decision because they want to stay on that career track. Same thing happened again next year. It's about option. It's about option. What's best for that student that the parents and the students make that decision, not me. So we did that. We have one team, one band, one football team, one high school. So all the sports activities go back to East. We transport kids back to East to practice football, basketball, baseball, track, cheerleading, all that. So we got one team. We do provide transportation. Let me give you some numbers just right there. When I said we had uh, too many seats. Paul C. Bond. Paul C. Bond would be up to 350 students. Last year they had 302. So they had 48 seats too many. Maybe you a big one. But would be up for 825. So they had 340 seats in that building not being used. Down the street, as I said before, Kirk Mill had 282, had 218 seats empty. So I put that 282 over to McGuffey where they had 340. They might go be another year off with financially by being smart using money. Check this one out. East, they have 1,250 students. They had 225 sheets available. At a certain time, they may have 4 to 25 because 200 juniors are going to shopping in the morning and 200 seniors are going there in the afternoon, so we had a lot of seats up there. So we did make that adjustment to do that. The bottom line is what we are doing here now is that we want to make schools fun for kids so they have options. They pick. We cannot continue to educate kids the way we used to educate kids. There's no way. If you take my cell phone, okay, here's one. If you take your cell phone out, you see the kids texting? They know how to do all this stuff on cell phones. It's about technology now. We can go along and stand in front of the class and just talk, talk, talk. We're not going to pay any attention. 
And I said this before, if Rip Van Winkle wakes up, only place he's going to recognize schools. Because we're still in front of the class talking. Kids have changed so much, society has changed. So we have to make sure that we change what society changed with students. All the students, and I'm glad I got you here, I can say this here. Stop being so negative about our schools. Stop being negative about all the kids are not dumb. All the kids are crying for help. You know that. They are crying for help, and we have to provide that help. Everybody is not as fortunate as some of you in here. Now, I mentioned this the other day when I was speaking over there with a guy. The state superintendent called me when I was in Columbus. He called me, called me out of me. And I told him, I said, Dick, what you're doing is wrong. You're trying to treat equals and unequals the same. It's not going to work. Because you have some kids in some of your suburban school district not blaming all the kids because we love them, we want them to be successful, who have more support than our students. And you know that as well as I know. My toughest decision as a superintendent is whether to close school or keep it open on a snow day. Because I have to think about these students. Two things I think about. First of all, I think about it, they have gloves, coats, and hats. They be warm so they catch that bus at 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning while I'm sitting in a warm place. Next thing I have to think about, if I keep them out too long, do they eat? You know that as well as I know. Do they have an opportunity to eat? Some of our students may be the only meal they, are, they would get. I'm working with an organization now that we would, I'm trying to get snack packs to take home on Fridays. So they have some kind of snacks during the weekend. It is not the students' fault. Society. It's society. I told the state superintendent, I drew him this diagram, you heard me say it before. They talk about the achievement gap, close the achievement gap, close the achievement gap. We have a gap when the kids come to school. You know it as well as I know it. Give you a good example right here. You got some kids, let's do this at the baseball field. First base over here, second, third, home plate. We got some kids come to school born on third base. You agree? They got the parents at home. You got parents that read to them. You got the parents who turn that TV off. You got parents who get them up in the morning, feed them, bring them to school. That kid might have been born on home, on plate. Now I got some kids born on first base. But I'm held responsible, we are held responsible because it's a city. This kid born on first base, we got to get him all the way around too. I can't leave him over there because he goes, that's not his fault. Then I got little Johnny, never seen a bat. Never seen a bat. So that's the achievement gap already when school started. But guess what? When they leave kindergarten, we have raised that score. We have raised that score. I'm not just talking there. We got data to prove it. So we are doing what we're supposed to do, but it's not fast enough. We know how to do it, but guess what, folks? We can't do it by ourselves. You're gonna have to help us. We have the kids five or six hours a day. Then they're back home. I would tell someone today, I wish I had a military form. Just keep them there for a week or two. The kids like structure, they like discipline. We discipline them at home, then they get away from us, then they pick up something, bring it back on Monday morning. That's when we have a lot of problems, on Monday mornings or Friday evening. Because I'm gonna get you this weekend, or you got me this weekend, I went to get to school, I'm gonna get you back. Because I'm protecting. We can do this, but we need your help. Your grandparents, your parents, we can do it as a team. You see what our kids can do. We know what our kids can do. Can do. The point is, will we do it? Sometimes people just keep saying, they worry about 
extraordinary thing. You should be doing this, you should be doing that. Then a pretend to back to ordinary things. Worry about the extraordinary things. Do what you do best, and we'll make it. We'll, folks, we can do this. We can do this, I believe we can do it. If I don't believe it, we're not gonna do it. I do believe it. But I still cannot do it by myself. I need several people up here. I need all 50, 60 people out here. I had a conversation with the mayor last week at a breakfast. I told the mayor, I said, Mayor, we have to talk. We have to talk. You said you want to help us. I got some ideas. Because if we don't improve the schools, we're not going to improve the city. You know that. The first thing anybody in the uh, business coming to town, how is the school system? How is the school system? He can say, boy, they're making progress. progress making progress is not going to work. He needs to say, they are here. They are here. This is a major problem for a lot of urban school systems. I don't make up excuses, I just paint you a picture of how it is. That's the difference. An excuse and paint a picture two different things. Now, what we're doing in Youngstown City School, I feel good about what we're doing, how we're doing it, but we're just not moving fast enough. Now, they can sit up, so I just got to preach it. I'm sorry. <laughs> But we told we I'm in the church, I'm sorry. We told we was going to get them out here on time. Okay. So we're like, we're going to come back. Thank you. Long story, did you